Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Republic of Gamers or ROG Maximus 8 formula. And this board has a lot to show off. Now I'm not going to bore you, I'm going to bring you straight in. We're going to get on with it. Let's get it out of the box and have a look because this is something special. Right, so let's face it, you're not going to want to see me take it out of the box, are you? No, you've seen the box, you know what it looks like. The only thing that we really need to look at inside the box is the accessories, and here are the accessories. There's your uh, back panel thing, you've got a thing that on your door so you can tell your sister or your mum to go away. These are fan stickers that you can stick on the fans so when they spinny roundy. This is so you can, uh, if you've got loads of hard drives, you can identify them. If you've got that many hard drives, you should probably have a home server. Cables, lovely SATA cables. Then you've got your wireless and your Bluetooth magnetic dongle thing here. Uh, this cable, I haven't exactly worked out what it does yet. I think it's an extension cable for your RGBs. And then a uh, CPU thing, which is pretty useless and I don't like it. And then you've got the all important M.2 screw and connector. And I know what you're thinking now, Tom, where is the M.2? Because with the old board, the old formula, what you had to do was take the whole flipping thing. I said flipping. I actually didn't say a swear word. Uh, forum friendly now, people. So you had to take the whole flipping thing apart so you could get to the PCB on the motherboard so you could change your M.2 drive, which was a total mare. Because if you were um, in the process of uh, say for argument's sake your M.2 drive died and then you couldn't get it off, you couldn't get it out, you had to take the whole board apart. And if you were water cooled, it was a total and utter nightmare. But look, M.2, it actually comes apart. It's chuffing genius. And then it all clips back on, clips into place, and then you just get the screw and do it all back up again. It's literally that simple and it's done. So if you've got two graphics cards in, it might be a little bit of an issue. Uh, to be honest with you, with one graphics card in, it might be a bit of an issue. So if you're still water cooled, it's not brilliant, but at least you don't have to take the whole motherboard out and take all the armor off and the backplate, which this one still has. So, oh look, backplate. We can talk about the backplate now. Nice and sturdy, does give it a really nice heavy feel. It's a heavy motherboard. Um, right, so big news. EK have uh, made the water block over the MOSFETs. Uh, it does air cooling and it does water cooling and look, copper. So it's not, uh, before it was an all anodized aluminium, but look, copper. But yet it's EK, yet it still has the very familiar Asus kind of look. Now the armor doesn't have any way that we can add fans or anything to it like you can with the saber tooths. One of the things that you can see is the fact that it is all grey and black. It's all very monochrome. Uh, the, this has got like a mirror behind it. Does look very nice. Does look really good, to be honest with you. You can see the silver bits up around the side of the heatsink as well. That's mimicked up here as well. I will show you the LEDs properly in a minute. Having a look around the board, you can see it's absolutely ram-packed with uh, chokes and capacitors and the FETs are all behind it. If you want to see the full specs, make sure you click to go and have a look on the uh, OC3D website. See the full review, see the full rundown, like I said, about the chokes and the MOSFETs and the black caps and all that type of stuff. But if you have a look here, you can see this formula. Now, I have to say, I mean, I've seen it lit up now, but I have to say this appeared to me to be printed when I first saw it. <laughs> you wait until we light this little beauty up. So. We've got our Supreme FX audio down the side. That's becoming commonplace with Asus. When we come around the back, you can see we've got a nice big stack of USB 3s. You've got a C um, USB 3.1 there, a USB 3.1 there. They share that bandwidth. One gigabit uh, Intel Ethernet, two more USB 3s, uh, a PS2. A lot of people say, why? But these still can be really handy. Digital audio outs. Bluetooth and your uh, wireless there, and you've got your BIOS flashback and your BIOS clear buttons, plus a HDMI and a display port. Lots going on around the back, lovely. Right, when we move around here, 
U.2 connector. Looks like a mini SAS connector if you've got a RAID card like I have. But this uh, will use the same bandwidth that your M.2 will. So if you're lucky enough to have an Intel 750 drive or you end up getting one of the new U.2 ports, this is basically the new supercharged, super duper, uber duper SATA connection if you haven't got an M.2 drive. Uh, so you've got M.2, loads of bandwidth. U.2, loads of bandwidth. SATA, not so much bandwidth. Real simple, quick way of uh, describing it. Uh, horizontal USB 3 there. And it keeps the lines clean, as you can see, because it's not got a sticky uppy one all up around there. But there is another one down here, should you need it. One of the things that I do like around the outside of the uh, board, though, is up here. And that you've got your PCI poster there, which lights up red, and you can see uh, if it stalls or what stage your post is on. But can you see that? Look, start and reset. That is your power button. That is your reset button. Oh my God, why have they never done this before? It's amazing. They light up white as well. Love it. Literally gave me a nerd on. Brilliant. So loads of fans and stuff all the way around the outside. Uh, if you uh, pause, you'll be able to uh, get a nose in for yourself. But you've got the obvious one there and there's an obvious one there. Two obvious ones there. Actually, there's three obvious ones there. Look at how many they crammed in there. Um, there's more down the bottom as well. So there's lots of fan stuff, lots of lovely stuff. They thought about the um, uh, M.2. They thought about U.2 as well. We've got that on there. Still got SATA Express, although why? Look at all that room it takes up. No one uses it. But anyway, lovely. Other good thing about it is we've got uh, decent gaps between the graphics cards as well. So you've got, uh, that's where your dual slot would be. There's three slots gap, so you actually have a, a gap between as well. So you'll have a good solid gap between your graphics card if you're running SLI. Really does look the gonads. Let's move on. So one of the big features of the Maximus 8 formula, other than the fact there is very little red on it, although I have now got red LEDs on it, is the fact that it can do RGB, do a lot of different colours, and there are a lot of LEDs on this board compared to normal. As you can see, we've got some up here on the, uh, what I would call the MOSFET area. We've got some LEDs that you can see showing through here. You can see the little tabs. Uh, coming through on the uh, there's the, the silver plate that I showed you before. You've got the big formula sign that's lit up, and then you've got the uh, chipset heatsink underneath, and the, the little LEDs you can see they shine out on the board as well, catch it all really nicely. But what we've also got, uh, a bit like the Maximus Hero formula, is you can see that I've got an LED strip down here. And what I'm going to do. Uh, because I can change everything in the software, which I will change, show you shortly. There we go. There is uh, an RGB four pin header down at the bottom here that you can connect your LED strips to. Now you can get little extensions and stuff. I've literally just got mine pushed in at the moment, but I will show you the software shortly and then I'll show you all the colors and everything that they can do as well. So the Aura software, easy bit of uh, software that you can either download from the ASUS website or it comes on your driver CD that you get in the box anyway. And uh, you've got logo down the side and header. So the logo is uh, essentially all the stuff on the motherboard itself. So your chipset, the formula logo above the MOSFET, so like I've shown you already. And then uh, you've got header, which is the header which I've uh, shown you at the bottom. Uh, and you can either do these independently. You've got static, breathing, strobing, color cycle, music effect, or CPU temperature. Um, or you can hit, hit this little button here and it syncs the two up together. You've got two bars on the left and the right hand side. So the white is so that you can turn the brightness of the white up and white is with all the colors together. That's how it makes the, uh, the white tone. Uh, or you can switch it across and then you can again change the uh, intensity or the brightness but you can also change your color hue as well. We are on a little bit of an angle but this is uh, with everything set to um, uh, white as I've shown you before. What I'm going to do is uh, just go down just so that I'm not totally blinding you because you can turn them on and off independently as well is turn the lower LEDs off. This is in the lower header. So when we go back to the logo uh, this is us on uh, that's like the ready color you can see it's red and then uh, 
we can spin it round and then all I have to do is hit apply and that's our it's it's kind of a pinky sort of color it's it's got a little bit more blue in it uh, than I'd like so it's kind of got a really kind of almost like a windling kind of appearance if you know what windling is but you can see that we've got the logo down here is on formula logo and the LEDs all up the side but if I was to just switch over to just turning the brightness up back to white again uh, I know a color that a lot of people are always asking about because there isn't any real you know good boards that are able to do the RGB at the moment is green so there you go you've got your green rock board uh, another uh, color that you know lots and lots of people use is blue and then I'm going to try and get it round here And then you've got kind of a, uh, a yellowy, I want to call it urine colour. And that one uh, is especially for JR23, because <laughs> he likes urine coloured stuff. Um, now if we go back to uh, white, uh, I'm going to put it on strobing and put apply. Which, to be honest with you, I think it's just really annoying. Colour cycle. You can see it fading through all of the colours. Now, the colour cycle is a really good way of me showing you something else because RGB, I'm going to talk to you about it in the conclusion, but there's essentially there's two different types of RGB out there. I've had a similar sort of problem with my uh, TV um, and I've got RGBs all around the cabinet and I added some RGBs on later and they wired, they're wired up slightly differently. Um, so they say that they're RGB, but they, uh, they, they display some of the colours differently. So if we do this, you can actually see the colours going through, and the LEDs that we've got on the bottom don't always match what's going on at the top. So we're green there and purple down here. The red is all right, but then we go into pinky sort of colour and it goes green, green and blue. So you can see that they don't match up. Now this isn't... Asus's fault. There is quite literally just two different types. Uh, the lights that I'm using are um, uh, cable mod ones that aren't out yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to cable mod ones. Okay, so apologies for that. My camera uh, or my microphone battery's died. So I'm going to talk to cable mod and see if they can't sort it out because um, uh, like I said there are two ways of getting them wired and it's just that wrong way round. It's not a mistake as such, like I said, there's uh, the ones that I bought that come from Amazon. I have my initial kit are one way, I got some uh, identical looking square units to go in and they do the colours the opposite way around like this. So just a case of putting them all together. It would have been nice if Asus had made available like a list of the ones that do work, the ones that they tested with. Most of the generic RGB ones that are on Amazon don't have black connectors and stuff on them though. But it's something that with time we can work out what's what. I didn't have a lot of time to get uh, the, the testing done, talk to cable mod and everything in the allotted time that I'd given the formula to get finished. So it will be something I will update uh, on the main article uh, and on the forums when I do find out some more information about it. Okay then, so on to the results and talking about the spec and all that type of stuff. One thing I do want to say is that uh, in case you noticed in the video, I am now using red Corsair Dominator Platinum Tops. Now these are going to be available for sale uh, in the UK and in the US in the not too distant future. I think they're already on the Corsair website for the 3200 megahertz kits. But I am uh, harping on at them about selling the Dominator Platinum Tops individually. Uh, so if you get a chance, say something to them and the people power may make them sell the tops individually. So all of those of you out there that have got Don Platts and they want uh, to upgrade to the red ones, you can do. A bit like buying the light bars. Anyway, the reason why I bought the memory out is because, as you can see, there are two kits there because we do test uh, two different memory speeds and we do our... Uh, motherboard testing so what we do is at stock i put the 2666 and they're the lpx sticks in enable xmp and then i just leave it i don't touch anything else for the um uh, stock tests so it's just xmp 2666 and then we run everything on the 6700k then when it comes to the overclocking what i do is i chuck the 3600 megahertz stick kits in uh, and then initially i then uh, run xmp to see whether they can do it 
the formula did literally boot up straight away past all of our tests at 3600 megahertz that in itself is a big deal with a lot of manufacturers at the moment the fact that you don't even have to play around with anything because some of them um, uh, you do have to go in and play around with voltages and you know set things up and play around with the vccio uh, and the uh, system agent voltage um, but with the asus i didn't have to at all uh, uh, one of the things I can say as well, sometimes that the boards can put them absolutely screaming silly volts. This wasn't too bad with that. Uh, but then what I also do is I do a 48 times 100 uh, setup, set everything up uh, manually. So I do all the volts, all the um, uh, memory timings, everything like that. See how tight I can get everything. Then what I do is I do a 24 times 200. So we up double the base clock, half the multiplier set everything up, all the cash up and everything again, set all the voltages up. And by going that in depth, it gives me a really good feel for the board because sometimes you, you can't get stuff uh, running. And even though this was a launch BIOS, it was actually just plain sailing ASUS. Uh, the CPU voltage that I was having to put through was um, a tenth up, I know a hundredth up than I would normally have done. So we were up from uh, one point, some, it's normally around 1.37 that I'm uh, running and then we were going up to around, uh, sorry, 1.375 is what I'm normally running. And then with this, we were putting 1.39 uh, in to get the everything running, 28, uh, sorry, 3600 megahertz memory and then uh, the 24 times 200. And, uh, so that was a little bit more up. Uh, which for this board I was yeah, I was a little kind of surprised with but like I said it's an early BIOS you'll be surprised a couple of um, iterations of that BIOS and that will bring that right down the only other thing that I found uh, was uh, the load line calibration on auto wasn't enabling anything I was having to turn it up to four manually but again I uh, spoke to Asus and they went oops because it's literally the first launch BIOS. It's not uh, on the ASUS website yet. It's not had any BIOS revisions yet. So it was one of those ones where I was almost like a quality tester. And I said to them, auto um, uh, load line calibration isn't working. And they went, you're absolutely right. It's now, so when the first one comes in to go out to the retailers and the first one that you can download on the website, that will be fixed. But keeping things fair, I was letting you know that I spotted something. Anyway, so, our tests. PC Mark 8. I'll bring the graph up, you can have a look. And what I'm doing with these graphs, I'm trying to give you a bit of variety. Not all, because if it, some of the graphs, if you go and have a look, the formula is literally at the top. So I'm purposely picking stuff to balance it out with this. So PC Mark 8, you can see it was beat by the uh, Z170 uh, Deluxe uh, in the overclock state. But this one is in second place and a very strong second place, I might add, because if you look down, you can see that some big chunks taken out of the scores from previous. But uh, at stock, it's actually absolutely top of the graphs. That's another thing that we've seen with this is that the stock performance is absolutely brilliant, which again, to stress, for an early launch BIOS, is, it just goes to show you how good the ASUS BIOS engineers are. Because normally with an early BIOS, it's the stock results that are bad and the overclock results are normally, that's where it finds its feet and uh, it stretches its legs a little bit more. To get the um, stock results right is actually pretty hard with an early BIOS. So they, obviously, it's not the first Z170 board that they've done, but the fact that it's all kind of playing in is, you know, it does speak quite well. But then when we go on to this one, like I said, balance, uh, with the X264 benchmark stock, it didn't do so well. It's at the bottom of the graph, but only by like tiny little smidgens. Uh, and if you have a look at the bottom of the graph, there pretty much is nothing between them. So although it wasn't brilliant, at the same time, it's not particularly bad either. Again, we say BIOS, it's more than likely going to, well, will get fixed. But this one, as expected, overclocked, absolutely romps off into the distance and tops the graph. Move on to gaming though, the 3D results on this are absolutely spot on. And one of the things I do want to say is we're talking about all the graphs and I always forget to say, we do lots more tests and they're all on the, the website link. So click underneath, click um, uh, to go through to the overclock 3D website. We can see the pictures, all of the other graphs, uh, more games, all that sort of stuff. So you can go in there and get a real decent feel for it. A lot of the stuff that the benchmarks that we use, you'll be able to attain free. So you'll be able to download them onto your rig and you'll be able to compare the difference as well. 
The other thing that I will say is uh, you can click through and discuss what you thought of this review, this video, all of the other reviews that we do on the Overclock 3D forums. And we have noticed that some of our, uh, uh, for the forum, the verification emails haven't been getting through. Nine times out of ten, that's either it's in your spam box or your uh, email provider is actually blocking them all together. We've not worked out why yet, but we are on it. If you haven't had your verification email, comment on Facebook or um, uh, send us a tweet. Talk to one of your mates that's already with us. All I need to know is your uh, forum username and I can go in and manually add you and I will do. So don't think we don't want you. Don't think that we've not bothered sending your verification email out. It's actually all done automatically and they are all going out. Sadly, you're just not getting them. So now I'm going to move over here and we're now going to talk straight at the camera and I'm going to talk to you about the award and we're going to give you a proper, proper, proper conclusion. So, uh, it was going to be a gold award, but I sat down, I weighed everything out, I run a few things around my head and I've actually decided, for the first time ever for a motherboard, uh, these awards are like ra um, uh, rocking horse droppings. Um, but I've decided for the first time ever I'm going to give a motherboard the TTL White Gold Award and this literally is the absolute pinnacle of uh, awards. Golds, you have to work really really hard to get a gold. Uh, generally a lot of people go oh all the videos are gold, it's because I don't generally make videos about the bad stuff because it, it, it causes so many problems and I end up spending weeks arguing with people trying to explain why. It's just so a lot of the time they're not so good stuff, you'll just see it on the website. And that's bad enough. But anyway, so gold, brilliant, white gold, epic, epic proportions. And why have I given it the gold award? Well, so uh, everyone has been uh, bringing out red motherboards. Literally everyone and their dad now has a red motherboard and gaming boards. And it's, it's watered down what was before red for ROG meant premium. There's too many other red boards out there now, so Asus have now taken the choice to kind of go, eh, we're going to start moving away from it then. And this is one of their first big boards that we've seen that has gone m literally monochrome with it. There's greys, there's silvers, there's blacks. You've got little bits of mirror accents on the uh, chipset uh, heatsink. And they've, they've managed to make bland or understated seem so premium because we've had so many horrible colours uh, in the past and so many people, um, you know, copycatting and, you know, basically tagging on to what red meant that they've now managed to make it look cheap. This actually, I was really surprised when I got it out of the box, I was just thinking, yeah, black formula and you get it and it's just so nice and it's so understated. But they took then, they took that a step further. It's all right having a blackboard, but then they go, right, so you, we're going to let you light the chips up like you did before, and it's going to be RGB, but that's just down there. So we're going to add them uh, where the North Bridge used to be, and we're going to have a light up formula logo. And then at the top looks a bit dark. We need some more colour up there where we'd normally have some colour on the uh, MOSFET. So we're going to stick some more LEDs up there for you as well. Then not only with that, it's all RGB, it's all controllable. And now you might want to uh, control all the stuff that goes on in your case as well. So we're going to stick you an RGB um, uh, header at the bottom. And I'm not sure whether I'm meant to say this or not, because I'm, I've not technically had an email telling me about it, but I know it's coming. They will be bringing RGB... as well that you're going to be able to control all those lights on and it's just like for the love of god we've been screaming for this for so long and it's finally arrived and it's like <laughs> and that is why it went uh white gold it literally would have had to have been a dog performance wise to have changed my mind uh, and we probably we may have just gone with innovation for the rgbs because that's really where we were thinking about it to start off with but then the stock performance was absolutely bob on even though it's a uh, pre-release bios it's literally the first one that they put on a bios and sent out i don't even think that many have gone out to press yet uh board wise i mean 
Uh, and then the overclock, it's still overclocked absolutely fine. We need a smidge more volts than we normally would have done on the CPU um, uh, V-Core, but everything else worked fine. There was one tiny niggle where it looked like load line calibration wasn't working, and it's basically the auto wasn't working, but then I just, when you turn it on manually, it worked absolutely fine, and the volts were just dead stable, not going up, not going down, absolutely where we wanted it, and it was like, Right, okay, so there was a, a tiny little niggle. I told them and they went, yep, we fixed it. So that was brilliant. They, I, I, I probably, one of the emails that I got earlier on was probably what come through was, was the new BIOS, but I've been literally steaming to try and get this done. New year, do you know what I mean? Get this stuff out, they wanna see this board. So I'm, I was working my rear end out, but they, they, they said they fixed it. So when you buy one, it'll be done. It'll be bob on. Um, so th that's pretty much it. They've, they've ticked the box. The, the aesthetics, spot on. They added a bit more in with the RGB and put them everywhere, lovely. Performance was there. It literally, as long as this board comes in around the 300 pound mark, I'm not gonna argue with the price because you do get a lot of stuff in the box and it just looks and works so nice. And like I said, it's gonna work with pretty much anyone's rig now. It doesn't matter if you've got a nvidia graphics card you just change the led you know an oem one you just change leds to green blue white red pink jr yellow if you want it doesn't matter it's just i'm going to get so much flack for that on the forum um it's they've literally just gone and it's the best way i can put this now is this is the game changing board they've had a few warm-ups where they did the hero um, alpha, where we, oh, we might put a little RGB on this, and the, the ones before where we had the Z170 Deluxe when that come out that had RGBs under the heatsink, they've kind of they've they tested the water. Um, uh, it people accepted it, they liked it. They've now gone full retard with the RGBs, and they've done it on a black monochrome board, and it looks the gonads. If you don't like it, turn it off, and it still looks good. There's literally nothing I can say wrong about it white gold award no arguments absolutely spot on you know you want one i know i want one i know i've got one and they're not having it back right asus white gold award what do you guys think i genuinely like to hear what you think underneath but also Come and say hello on the forums. Don't forget what I said earlier about the uh, verification emails. That goes for anyone that's uh, tried um, uh, and not got the verification emails for the, like, the last few months. It's something that's just come up or I've just kind of pulled my head out of my rear end and I've noticed it because someone said. So if you've not got one, let us know. I'll get you on and we'll get you active on the forums. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the first ever white gold award-winning motherboard that I've ever reviewed out. Ding! There we go. It was there in the end. <laughs>